There's time to prepare. It's not like snuffed out suddenly with a gunshot wound or in an accident and not time to repent. There's even mercy in the plague. But this day of judgment started as every other day. It's now 120 years gone by. This man walked up and down the streets, and if he lived today and had to endure the reproach of Christianity, they would say, even if they loved him, even if they were close to him, well, that's his role. He's a prophet. That's what I get everywhere. Uh, David Wilkerson preaches a strong message, a prophetic message. That's his role. Someone has to do it. I'm sure Brother Rutledge gets it. Heavy. That's his role. And so we come to listen to the man playing out his role. And that's what Jeremiah said. You come and sit before me, and I sound to you like a song, and you enjoy the song, and you go out and pay no attention. Just a lovely song. So let me play out my role for you tonight. Because only a remnant hears. Only a remnant hears. But he preaches. A one-track mind. Judgment, judgment, judgment. This man heard something from God. This man had been shut in. There comes a time when God says the wound of the nation is too grievous. It's too late for anything but judgment. And then the righteous will save themselves by their, their prayer and their righteousness before the Lord. Look at verse 12, beginning with verse 12. For thus saith the Lord, thy bruise is what? And thy wound is what? He said, this is so serious, your sickness, your sin sickness. Folks, look at me. This is God speaking through this prophet. Jeremiah, my people, Israel, Judah, have become so sinful and so wicked. They've turned against every word that I've sent. I've sent my prophets rising up early and late at night. I sent them weeping. I, break, I brought every message I could to them. They sat there before you and hardened their hearts. And now I tell you, Jeremiah, their wound is incurable. Listen to me now. In spite of all that, there is a promise for a holy remnant locked inside this horrible, dreaded message. There's a promise for God's people that there is a holy remnant who hear these calls do you know that in every church I find a holy remnant of people who, who hear a certain sound? They've been locked in with God. They've been in the Word. They hear the same message. They know it. They, they hear this kind of preaching. I can see it. I, I see the nod of the head. I see the knowing eye. I know they've been locked in with God, and it bears witness with their heart. They know it's true, and there's a hope for these. There's a wonderful hope. Uh, verse 21. Their nobles shall be of themselves, and their governors shall proceed from the midst of them. And I will cause him to draw near, and he shall approach unto me. For who is this that engaged his heart to approach unto me, saith the Lord? Now, now look at this, please. Thy health will I restore. I will heal thee of thy wounds. I will have compassion. Let's verse 17 and 18. Look at it. I'm going to ask you again, do you love this book? Do you love this book? Do you love this, the Holy Word? Glory be to God. It makes me tremble. And you can write it down. Don't turn it. 2 Peter 3, 2. But know this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust. Last night, you probably heard the screaming coming from the prayer room. I went back. And I was met by a young man who may be here now, a young married man, fine-looking boy, some men trying to hold him down. And when I walked back, 
he shook loose and came and he said, Lucifer is God. He's a Pentecostal boy. And he asked the people to leave the room. I took him inside and he fell groveling on the floor, holding his stomach and his legs, but he was in convulsions. And he, that demonic spirit was told that his battle was not with me, but with Jesus. And when he heard that, Satan fled. And that boy melted my arms, weeping, praising the Lord, speaking in tongues. And when he came out of it, he said, where am I? What happened? And he said, Brother Dave, and his heart broken. And son, if you're here tonight, I, I, I can't begin to tell you how that touched my heart. He said, David, Brother Dave, how could it happen to a Pentecostal kid that, he, he said, I was about to kill my wife. He said, a spirit came over me and, and Satan became God. I said, I know what it is. You gave him a place. Your heart went out after lust. You went after strange flesh. And I'm not going to give you, I don't know his name, the precious young man. And I'm not trying to embarrass him. I'm trying to prove a point. He's addict, he was addicted up to last night to pornography. X-rated VCR movies. And he'd given the devil a room a place he'd open the door because the devil has come down unto you. The Bible says the devil goes about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Christian, listen to me. It is mockery. It is scoffing. When you hear the call to separate yourself from sensuality, to lay down your idolatry, to lay down that spirit of adultery, to lay down that lust and to not open your mind and your heart. Don't for a moment think that the demons that have been turned loose in this last day don't see you parked there in front of your idol watching that stuff. Don't think for a moment he's not saying there's a Christian who's a mocker. There's a Christian who can sit and hear it thundered at his heart and it doesn't mean a word. And he stands there just waiting because he knows the door's opening, the mind is opening, and he knows that soon they're going to be able to go to church and cover the altar with their tears and go out. And the Bible says, be treacherous to their own wives. Go after their own lust. These are those who are sensual. They're full of lust. Going after strange flesh. The day you... Every time you walk into that video movie place where they sell the videos, the devil sees you going after strange flesh. It all started, you know, with just a little bit, didn't it? And then it started with the R, and then it has, because your, the appetite gets jaded, and it has to have more and more and more until finally the devil sees it. And I'm telling you, I'm going to look you right in the eye and tell you there are going to be hundreds and not even hundreds, but thousands and thousands of Pentecostal people are going to be possessed of devils before it's all over and demons because they're sitting in front of idols watching R and X-rated filth and they're going after strange flesh and they're going to be damned. I walk the streets of New York. I walk right down uh, Central Park West the other night and I look at demon-possessed people and even in the middle of the night while they're fast asleep on those park benches, the demons in them won't let them alone. They're jerking and they're pouring out four-letter words, those sexual innuendos. And they're jerking. One is hitting his head all night long and you can see the blood, you can see the horror. Those demons won't let him loose all night long. 